Welcome, brothers and sisters. Ditch Flegel, real name, joins the Bearded Club in the sixth governing body update of the year that is all about the importance of converting people into the cult after they kill the door-to-door -door converting efforts, the only formalized activity they had of looking for converts. Let's analyze the words of this robotic cult leader, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's begin. Since our last report, we've had seven more special conventions. They were held in Philadelphia, United States, Sofia, Bulgaria, Suva, Fiji, Lyon, France, Asuncion, Paraguay, Tampa, United States, Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. More than 16,000 delegates traveled from 101 countries to attend these conventions. There was a combined peak attendance of over 98,000, and 859 were baptized. I know that at this point, you'd probably expect me to refute this with some anecdotal evidence of how nobody goes to the convention anymore. We cherry-picked pictures from Reddit, just as Gage showed us cherry-picked data of the peak attendance in these international conventions, which are usually the most attended conventions anyway. However, from my own experience, conventions are actually alive and well with more attendance than ever. That shows us that we really cannot just guide ourselves through anecdotal evidence of this religion dying with lackluster convention attendances. If we take the couple of Reddit posts telling us that people aren't attending the conventions as proof that the conventions are dying, we are no better than the Jehovah's Witnesses taking the anecdotal evidence of Gage as proof that the conventions are better than ever. And this is important to get right because this update is all about using cherry pick data to prove a point. In Paraguay, there are currently about 11,500 publishers. Nearly 2,000 delegates were invited to attend the special convention. Remarkably, though, the peak attendance was 28,617. Clearly, there's much potential for growth. In fact, 293 were baptized at this convention alone. That's the largest baptism at one location in the history of our work in Paraguay. Jehovah has truly blessed these special conventions. As you can see, 200 out of 11,000 is barely under 2%, which, although it might be the highest number of people ever baptized in Paraguay, it's still just barely over the average for Jehovah's Witnesses. In my experience, for as long as I went to conventions, 1% to 2% was usually the amount of people that got baptized in conventions. But hey, if you ask Gage Flegel, this isn't just barely over the average. This is proof of God Almighty himself. Forget about parting seas and miraculously freeing Christians from prison. Jehovah nowadays is all about showing himself through slightly better than average numbers. Here's a brief legal update. On September 17th, 2024, the 17 judges of the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Human Rights ruled in favor of Sister Pindo Mudia, who was given blood transfusions in Spain against her wishes. Despite our sister's clear oral and written refusal, a judge in Spain allowed doctors to proceed. The Grand Chamber concluded that this violated her rights it confirmed that patients have the fundamental right to choose their own medical care. What makes this decision especially significant is that it was issued by the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Human Rights. The Grand Chamber issues decisions only when a case is considered to be groundbreaking. Thus, this decision obligates 46 countries in Europe to respect patients' health care choices. We're grateful to the Grand Chamber for this decision. Above all, we thank Jehovah for this legal victory, which will benefit all of our brothers and sisters in Europe as they make informed medical decisions. I absolutely hate this development. I agree that people should have the freedom to choose the medical procedures they want to put their bodies through. And that is precisely the issue here. Jehovah's Witnesses are against that belief. Jehovah's Witnesses do not want followers to have the freedom to choose. The leadership has already decided for them. What they want is the freedom to do what their religion told them to do, even when that harms them. 
Why? Well, because anyone who unrepentantly gets a blood transfusion in this religion isn't exercising their freedom of choice. They will be punished with removal and shunning of everyone, friends and family included. Jehovah's Witnesses have no freedom of choice. What Gage Flegel is all giddy telling people in excitement is that they now can die in Europe like him and his buddies decide you should if you need a blood transfusion because now even the courts have been fooled into following whatever the governing body says. Why? Because this religion lied, saying this was about freedom of choice over medical issues, when they meant the freedom to end your life to become a martyr for this religion, or die in life by being shunned by everyone you know. That's why Gage Flegel doesn't say we can talk to our doctors to let them know we don't want blood, because coercing someone into accepting or rejecting a medical treatment is illegal. So instead, to do that illegal thing, he uses red herrings. This significant ruling reminds us how vital it is to discuss our personal medical choices with our doctor and to put these choices in writing, just as our faithful sister did. See, it's all about choices and about putting those choices in writing. This is a very successful red herring because to the courts, this is completely lawful because it looks like it's about freedom of choice. Well, to Jehovah's Witnesses, this is about them making sure that they tell their doctors they are not allowed to take blood transfusions. And once the illegal coercion is over, Gage wants you to get excited about the campaign to go look for more people to become his followers. And he wants you to know Jehovah is helping you because anecdotal evidence. Annalore is an 84-year-old pioneer sister in Austria. Because of her health, she can't preach from door to door for long periods of time. However, she decided to offer a Bible course to people who had responded positively to her visits before. She thought of six people and visited them. She was very happy to demonstrate the Bible course with all six people. The result? All six agreed to continue the course in the coming days. Checkmate, atheists! What? You said there is no evidence of God? Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses one time offered a book study to someone, and that someone said yes. How do you call that? Insufficient evidence? In the Philippines, while witnessing from house to house, two publishers approached a woman named Josie who was doing laundry in front of her apartment. Since Josie was busy, she told the publishers to talk instead to her adult son and nephew who were inside. Using the direct approach, the publisher started a Bible study right away with both the son and the nephew. As the Bible study was being demonstrated, Josie's niece also joined in the discussion, and the publishers offered her a Bible study, which she readily accepted. Now, with three persons involved in the initial Bible study session, Josie became more curious and also wanted to join in the conversation. Josie, too, accepted a Bible study. However, before the two publishers ended the initial study session, a fifth family member, Josie's daughter, was moved to ask what they were discussing. Taking advantage of yet another opportunity, the publishers offered her a Bible study, which she immediately accepted. In all, five family members from one household accepted the offer to have a Bible study using the direct approach. Clearly, Jehovah has blessed our efforts to offer Bible studies during the campaign. See, the witness offered Bible studies to all people in a house, and they all said yes. This literally could not have happened if Jehovah was not blessing them. Have you seen how little they preach nowadays and how boring their propaganda is? Seriously, every cult will always have new examples of new victims being dragged into the group and will try to use them to convince current members to stay. After all, I somehow doubt any witnesses will want to convert to Mormonism just because some Mormons establish indoctrination sessions with somebody else. Oh, and what is this super advanced direct approach Gage is waxing lyrically about? Just asking someone if they want a Bible study. That's the direct approach. Just asking. But we want to continue to focus on starting Bible studies. Brothers and sisters, 
Don't lose the momentum of this campaign. Ride the wave of enthusiasm. Continue to offer Bible studies at every appropriate opportunity. If it's so important, then why is the structure around preaching work more loose than ever? No more hour requirements, the lowest hour ever to be a pioneer, passive card witnessing where they don't approach anyone. Preaching in this religion has never been more casual, yet Gage still wants you to get him more followers. In addition, many have started studies by witnessing informally to relatives, neighbors, co-workers, shopkeepers, and so forth. In Tanzania, a sister named Elizabeth started four new studies during the first days of the campaign. One was with a woman who had a small cafe across the street from the Kingdom Hall. Elizabeth frequently stopped in her shop for tea or to purchase small items, and she decided to offer her a study using the direct approach. They watched the video, Welcome to Your Bible Study, and the woman was delighted. She said, we should start right now. She also included her daughter and her niece in the demonstration of the study. Elizabeth was very pleased that she also attended a congregation meeting. When asked what she thought of the meeting, the woman said, that's what I love about Jehovah's Witnesses. They study the Bible. When I go to other churches, they just sing and preach, but don't study the Bible. When? When do Jehovah's Witnesses study the Bible? This is how I know this experience is fake. This we study the Bible narrative came with this religion was starting just as the Bible students and wanted people to think they studied the Bible so hard that they found out the dates of the end of the world. But Jehovah's Witnesses have long moved on from the pseudo-intellectualism they pretend to have. Instead, all we have nowadays are the most boring indoctrination videos ever made with some cherry-picked Bible verses to cosmetically support whatever they want to say already. This isn't about studying the Bible anymore. This cult is more and more about gaslighting yourself into staying in the cult. In some areas, publishers have many return visits. But perhaps we need to consider prayerfully if our return visits are productive. Are such individuals growing in their love of the truth? Do they truly appreciate our visits? Are they interested in a Bible study? If not, perhaps we're striking the air. It might be best to redirect our efforts. Those individuals will have another opportunity to hear the good news when the territories work again. When will the territory be worked again now that nobody has any incentive to work the territory? What Gage is talking about are progressive Bible studies. Bible studies where the person is willing to talk to the Jehovah's Witness and everything, but is resistant to committing to the cult and going to the meetings regularly, which is the next step in their indoctrination process. And Gage doubles down on conversion being the point of a Bible study. Similarly, we might ask ourselves, are my Bible students making progress? Prayerfully consider, are they accepting Bible truths? Are they beginning to apply what they learn and to make changes where needed? Have they begun to attend congregation meetings? Are they speaking with others about what they learn? If they're not progressing, it would be best to spend our time and energy seeking out those who are rightly disposed for everlasting life. Bible studies aren't just about studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses like Jehovah's Witnesses want you to think. They are about being converted into a Jehovah's Witness. Engage couldn't leave it clearer. If your Bible study isn't showing signs to convert, drop them like it's hot. There are many people in the world that you could be converting right now. Dozens of them. Anyway, get excited at these numbers now. Also, the Philippines reports that during the 2024 service year, they had 5% growth. What's been the result? For the first time, they reported more than 260,000 publishers. The number of studies has grown to over 252,000, and 12,201 were baptized during the service year. 120 new congregations, 15 new circuits were formed. Amazing! This is how boring and corporate this cult has become. The most amazing things you can get are simply numbers on a spreadsheet. Let's just wrap this up by telling Jehovah's Witnesses that whatever they're doing will never be enough because they can always do more. Clearly, we each have different circumstances. But could you look for opportunities to serve as an auxiliary pioneer? 
Could you reach out and become a regular pioneer? If you're already pioneering, could you serve where there's a greater need, perhaps even in another land? Have you considered applying to attend the School for Kingdom Evangelizers? Some graduates of that school are used as temporary special pioneers, special pioneers, circuit overseers, and missionaries. Truly, there are so many opportunities to reach out in Jehovah's service according to our own individual circumstances. The book Organized to Do Jehovah's Will, Chapter 10, discusses many ways we can expand our ministry. If we test Jehovah out in this way, we can be certain of his blessing. Yeah, you want his blessing? Well, Jehovah works on a quid pro quo basis. You gotta work for free for his cult. First, doing the almost impossible task of converting people to this outdated cult in an ever-growing secular world. But that's all Gage wanted to tell us, that we should convert people into following him, that we can die without uh, by blood transfusion if we absolutely want to, because you know we're afraid that we're, we're not gonna get resurrected in Armageddon and everyone is gonna show it and shun us. And that conventions are still a thing. His beard will be the most memorable thing out of this desperate and lazy update to Jehovah's Witnesses, along with his fake and robotic mannerisms. So let me try gauge direct approach by asking you directly to subscribe to this Bible study, where we actually study the Bible way more than Jehovah's Witnesses, and maybe join the anointed Patreon and YouTube supporters like these guys right here that get videos early, along with behind-the-scenes stuff 